Good afternoon, Mr. Chair, members of the board, Mr. Commissioner. Yeah, just made it. I looked. Uh, my name is Jim Boyle. I reside in Gorham, and uh, I'm a University of Maine Forestry School graduate. Uh, worked early in my career in the North Maine woods uh, for Great Northern and St. Regis and Champion International, many of these same areas that some of these mines might be located. Um, for the past 20 years, I've been, I've owned my own environmental consulting business. Um, I have seven employees, and in 2013 and 14, I served as the Senate Chair of the Environment and Natural Resources Committee in the Maine Legislature. Uh, so I was intimately involved in every word of statutory proposed changes, and as well as followed closely uh, rulemaking changes here at the board. And, um, so that's a little bit of background. Um, my main focus, I hadn't intended to testify when I first got here, but that often happens to me. So I hear things, and um, so I want to talk about something that I haven't heard yet, and that's a concept that I have that I'd like the board to think about, which is um, in respect to if a mine application happens and is permitted and a mine goes forward, one provision I would like you to consider might be uh, something along the lines of a third party environmental or mine expert monitor on site that's uh, independent of the mine company and independent of the state or the department that reports to the department. And there's provisions like that that are done on uh, infrastructure projects currently in other situations and under other permits. Um, what that could do, if it worked properly, is you'd have an independent, the reason I thought of it was when I was watching the slides and hearing some of the proposed uh, changes, uh, things like um, monitoring or, or if something happens, I can't remember the specifics on the slide now, but you may have an, a situation where the uh, applicant or the mine operator is required to report to the state within 10 days if a certain thing happens. There's another provision at the uh, compliance wells where they may they would have to report within 24 hours electronically to the department, which is good, I think, protocol to establish a big picture across the entire uh, state. Um, the concept that I have that, that I'm asking for consideration would be that uh, the mine applicant would have a requirement in their permit that they would pay for this person, and it might cost, it might not be full time, that's something that the department and you and maybe the legislature could flesh out how it would work. Um, but a lot of what I hear and the fears and concerns that I hear from the public, it's a, a lot of what's happened over the past several years that I've been involved in since, there's a, a measure of mistrust, I think, out there. And one of, one of the things you want to establish to establish some level of trust is that there's an expert that, that's independent of all of this process, independent to a certain extent even from the state, but certainly independent from the the mine operator who has expertise and is recognized with expertise. Typically how it works is the mine operator applicant will propose a number of different professionals that they vet um, that would be independent of them and then the department um, approves um, those p potential experts and, and then they're put into place. And it can, you know, even if it were a full-time individual, it might be something on the order of, for a contract, maybe 100000 a year or something like that, which on the scale of a multi-million dollar mine is not a huge expense, and I think it could go a long way to establishing a level of trust with the, the public if all this were to happen. Um, and there's also a little bit of background, I guess, for my thinking when I think about how this all could play out potentially is that it could take, let's say it takes three or five years for all of this rulemaking and statutory stuff that play out what a best case and we're like that would be fast I think in my judgment so let's say it were five years and um, maybe there's a five-year process to apply from that point forward to get a permit so that's now you're looking at 10 years before any earth is moved at least for the, the full mining not, not exploration necessarily but um, and right now I think as things stand as my understanding is we have a some expertise at the department, but we don't, we don't have a mineral metallic mining operation here in Maine, like what was described in Michigan. So we really don't have, as I see it, in-house expertise that deals day in and day out with mining, metallic mineral mining. <clears throat> so this individual or company that might, they would have to establish that they have done this kind, they do have this kind of expertise at actual mines, maybe similar to the Michigan example that was given, for example, uh, or could be elsewhere. Uh, it would just be, and, and so, and plus, even if we do have the expertise now, some of the people with the gray hair might not be in their jobs 10 years from now. 
uh, when I, you know, not looking directly at you, Bob, but just for example. Um, no, I mean, 10 years, and then you have 10, 20, 30 years of operation, it, you know, um, that would be sort of one concept. I have other thoughts, but I'm not going to take the board's time on this because I think that this is going to probably come back to the legislature. I may follow that process too. So, um, so that's my concept. Any questions? Uh, thank you very much. I'm glad you brought that up because at uh, two different levels, a non mining level, but basically at a construction level in a municipality where Walmart or some such large store comes in, more often than not, part of the whole operation is that uh, some engineer uh, that's well known in the state or out of the state comes and gets paid uh, on a basically per job basis to uh, make sure that the activity that is supposed to occur with regard to uh, maybe uh, flood areas and other things around the construction site that person comes and uh, is responsible for making sure that the work that is done is to code and then reports that to the uh, select man or to whomever it might be in that town. That's the non-mining aspect. Now the mining aspect, few people are very familiar with it at all. Most people know something about OSHA, Occupational Safety and Health Agency, and when you hear OSHA, you, better, you almost kind of want to run because they come on board to make sure that whatever you're doing, uh, it's very, very uh, covered by federal law. And the mining version of that is MASHA, M-A-S-H-A, Mining and uh, main Mining Safety and Health Agency or something like that. Anyway, MASHA, I'm kind of mispronouncing it, but that's something that we don't choose. When the state decides, if we were to decide to uh, grant a permit, for whatever kind of mining, above ground, uh, below ground, doesn't make any difference. MASHA then comes in and basically is responsible for monitoring health and safety of all workers and all employees and all visitors and all anybody else that comes anywhere near the mining, or pardon me, the, uh, the area, the mining areas as designated. So you brought up a really good point because I agree with you. It would be a wonderful idea to have Again, this goes back almost to a community thing. You get somebody who's an expert based on time, uh, experience, and other things who would come in and put a bid in to help monitor what's going on above and beyond, which might be happening by motion and marshal. Anyway, I just thought that was a great idea. Thanks. Thank you. If I could follow up that, uh, the specific difference I see is that um, Misha uh, at the federal level would be focused primarily and their expertise would be on my, uh, safety of the, of the employees, which is paramount uh, if this were all to happen. My concept would be slightly different from that in the sense that it would be uh, specifically required by the state to monitor all aspects of the conditions that were spelled out in great detail of ch in Chapter 200 and any future changes that were required in state statute. So for example, it, it, the mine safety inspector might be on site for safety things, but this other role would also include biological monitoring. It would include potentially um, being involved in the mon baseline monitoring, um, re at least reception uh, by this expert of baseline monitoring information before the mine even starts operating so that that company or individual could then be tracking and familiar with the, the water quality provisions all the way through baseline through operation, into operation, um, it could even include a component or individual with, with some expertise in community relations and uh, outreach with uh, the tribes, uh, uh, or wildlife, uh, all, all the different aspects. There's many, many aspects of what are going to have to be required as a condition, I think, is what I've seen in the slides and have had in discussion in the legislature. And I think it would be, there's a definite, the strong, strong role would be that the department's ultimately responsible, um, but often they don't have for one thing, that even if they have the expertise, they don't often have the time to have the expert, say, in Presque Isle or Bangor. The expert might be in, one expert in Augusta who then is responsible for all, lots of other jobs, too, that they do. You really, this would be a provision that the applicant pays for that, that gives the state of Maine and its citizens some, some comfort that there's a real strong advocate and, and uh, not necessarily advocate, but a, a neutral third-party monitor with expertise on site. 